Hi, this is Bill Bronchick, and in this video, we're going to explore the factors that go into deciding whether or not a deal is good as a rental property. Now, what you might come across very often is a property that doesn't make sense as a fix and flip. The margins are too thin, it needs too much work, uh, it's not enough profit, it's too, you know, it's too risky of a deal that may work for a rental. So, for example, you walk into a property that's bank owned and you say, well, you need kitchen cabinets and countertops and appliances and a new bathroom. It's going to cost 30, 40 grand where if it's not in bad shape, it's just dated, it might with a little bit of freshening up make a very good rental property with just some maybe used appliances and uh, some carpet paint and linoleum instead of tile and so forth and a little bit of spruce up here and there. So there are three factors that I look at when deciding whether or not a deal will make a rental property as a good prospect. And the first one is repairs really light, like under 10 grand. Now I realize a more uh, higher end, bigger property, that's hard to keep under 10 grand, but most likely, you know, the properties you're going to be dealing with are not big expensive properties. They're going to be uh, your basic three bedroom, one and a half, two and a half bath. Uh, one or two car garage, 12 to 1300 square foot ranch, which no matter what the value is, you know, in one city it could be worth 100 and in another city it could be worth 350, uh, you still have the same Home Depot. So in terms of repairs, this is pretty much universal no matter where you live. So if you can get away with a little bit of carpet paint, not new appliances, used appliances, maybe some cheap countertops, the big, you know, long ones you can cut to fit uh, that are pre-molded at Home Depot or Lowe's, um, a little bit of landscaping, maybe some linoleum in the bathroom, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, a little bit of freshening up on the landscaping and paint the front door. Uh, you know, you get away with it as a rental, even though the cabinets are old, maybe you can paint them white and put new um, uh, door, you know, knob handles on the doors and so forth and on the drawers. Just freshen it up, you know, five to ten grand worth of work. You don't want to go into a rental and spend thirty, forty, fifty grand to make it into a rental. It's just too much work and it's just not worth the effort and you won't probably recoup your money. So number two, we want to try to keep it under 80% of ARV all in. What do I mean by all in? What I mean is purchase price, repairs, closing costs, if you're going to buy cash and then refi out, those closing costs. So you want to try to be all in at about 80% and not much more than that. And the reason is, is if you go and buy a property uh, for, you know, uh, let's say, 20% down and get an 80% loan, which is pretty typical for lenders, and then you have to put another, you know, 20, 30,000 into it, which you wouldn't do, you buy your rule number one, but even if it was 10,000, you're, you're out a big chunk of money. The better way to do it is to buy it cash or buy it with hard money and then fix it up, get a higher appraisal, and refinance it based on appraisal. And right now, Fannie Mae and Freddie, those are your two big players, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, will do 75% of your ARV, of your after repaired appraisal value. And that means if you can be all in at 80% and refinance at 75%, you've only got 5% left in the deal. Now, ideally, Number two would be less than 75% ARV, so you're in for nothing, but that's difficult to do in this market to get it that cheap. As long as you're all in for about 80%, including repairs and closing costs, you refinance, even if it's 82%, you'd be in you know, at 75% uh, refi, you'd be in for 7% down, which is still way better than putting 20% down plus repairs out of your pocket in a rental. So one, two, and the third one's a little more mathematical, the debt service ratio okay so what that is is a ratio of net operating income that's the numerator and the denominator would be the principal and interest payment on the mortgage so we have to do these either all annually or all monthly to get an accurate number so for example if we have fifteen hundred dollars in rent and then three hundred dollars in taxes, insurance, management, etc. Okay? So that the net operating income is 1200. We want to divide that by the, the principal and interest payment. And let's say that's $1000 principal and interest. Now, 
It's not PITI, it's just principal and interest. We already have taxes and insurance subtracted over here. And that ratio, 1,200 to 1,000 to 1, is 1 1.2, and that's the minimum it should be, minimum, 1.2 to 1. Okay, so $1.20 in that operating income to a dollar in P&I payment on the mortgage, which shouldn't be a problem on most you know, re reasonably priced properties. If you've got a $150,000 to $250,000 property and you know, you're all in at 80% uh, or less and you have this thing financed to 75% and you've got 5% you know, interest or less on the mortgage, 30 year fixed, you shouldn't have a problem. If, if it is a problem, probably too high of a priced property relative to the rents, you might want to look at a different neighborhood. So just to review, repairs we want to keep light, less than 10 grand, 80% of ARV all in, and a debt service ratio of 1.2 to 1. And that shouldn't be that difficult to find next time you come across a property that may not work as a fix and flip. Run these three criteria by it and see if it makes good sense as a rental property. This is Bill Bronchick, and I hope you've enjoyed this instructional video on how to analyze a rental property.